how do we name our podcast? So uh, one of the common concerns people have is, oh, search engine optimization, or I want to be found when people search podcasts. Here's the secret of that. You don't only have, you, you, your, your podcast title is not the only chance they have to find you. Why? Think of all the podcast episodes. Every single episode title is another SEO opportunity or findability on a podcast player, Google, you know, iTunes, um, Google, et cetera, et cetera, Spotify, et cetera. So um, I just want to encourage you to not worry so much about the podcast title because every single episode title will be another opportunity. Now, of course, it's not as strong of a signal as, as the title, but um, I think that uh, personally, I think that uh, the podcast title should be something that is easy for your ideal listener. Once they have discovered your podcast and started listening to it, it's easy for them to remember what it was called so that they can easily find it again. They can easily recognize the, the, the image, the thumbnail image of the podcast. Um, because by the way, the podcast title, basically at least a few of the words are going to go into the thumbnail, uh, you know, the, the image of the, you know, when I, and it's pretty small, right? Like most of us listen to the podcast on the phone. So the thumbnail image of a podcast is not that big. And you have to, you can't, if your podcast title has, you know, 30 words, right? I don't know how many characters they're, they're the maximum, but anyway, can't have that many. It's like, you can't put all 30 words on the thumbnail image. So it's probably, you might have a main title and a subtitle for the podcast. And if the subtitle is not super long, you could probably put the whole thing in the thumbnail image. So you got to think of it that way too. It's like, so for example, like, let's say a couple of podcasts I listen to regularly, uh, wait, wait, don't tell me, all right? That's easy to remember. Like, look, okay, that's, this is actually a, this is actually a good, good example. Wait, wait, don't tell me. What, what the heck is that about? Like they named the podcast, wait, wait, don't tell me. You have no idea what that's about. Now the NPR news quiz. Okay, fine. But that's not even in the, I don't think that's even in the title. It's just wait, wait, don't tell me. Right. But that's, that's catchy people who love the show you know, easily find it. Wait, they just type in wait, wait, and there, there it is, right? Um, another example, you know, the, the Sam Harris podcast. I, I don't know what it's called. I think it's called like, I don't even know what the Sam Harris podcast is called, but I know I could search Sam Harris and find it, right? Um, another one, I don't know, the um, uh, uh, Tom Bill Yu podcast. What is it called? See, I just search, I just search people's names, Right. Like like and the author field of your podcast title, there's there's the title field and then there's the author field, separate fields, I believe, in the search engine. And people search. I, I think people search the speaker in the title or the, the the podcast host way more than they search the title. So however clever your title being and one of the examples right now that we're we're, we're vetting right now. And thank you, Catherine, for this. She's thinking of naming her podcast Mission Atypical. ADHD and autism in the modern world. Great, wonderful. Now she's hoping that people will search autism and ADHD and find her. That's not, chances are, okay, so let's be really clear about podcast search SEO here. Just like any search engine, a podcast search engine wants to surface the most popular ones. They don't want, they don't want to surface ones that have just got started. Why, why would they do that? They, because they want to search, they want to surface just like Google, just like YouTube, they want to surface the ones that most people are going to go, oh, yes, that's the one I was looking for from that famous person. You see what I mean? They're not going to surface ours. So let's relax about the SEO podcasting. That's ridiculous. Now, I don't mean to, sorry, I don't mean to, I'm not, it's not a criticism of any specific person here. I'm just, I'm criticizing myself too. When I was naming my podcast, I'm like, oh, am I going to be clever? I put all the great keywords in there. No, no one's going to find my podcast except for my fans. Search George Cow and they'll find me. Right? So, Reality, reality here is that your podcast title is not, should not be thought of as SEO. It should be thought of as easy for the fan who's been listening for a while to find it again. Probably just your name. Yes, probably, you know, if it's ADHD, autism. That, yeah, yeah. The, the main topics of your podcast probably should be in the title. You might think it's for SEO. No, it's not for SEO. It's for your fans to find the darn podcast again. Okay. So the fact that the reality of you getting up in the charts and getting up on the search, it's not clever titles. It's, you know, um, 
nobody really knows how how the iTunes uh, algorithm works because otherwise people would gain the system. They, they, of course, they keep it hidden. Spotify algorithm, iTunes algorithm, people have guesses. It's not the number of reviews. They've already proven that fact. So, surprise, surprise. It's not how many reviews a podcast has on iTunes that gets up higher in the search. No, it's not. They've already proven that. It's not the case. Some podcasts have low reviews. People are theorizing, oh, it's maybe the number of downloads within a certain time range within, with different IP addresses. There's, there's, there's probably certain things like I'm sure download numbers fit into that. But reviews don't fit into that because you can ask all your friends and you can coerce all your friends and family to give you reviews. And you have more reviews than some, a, a celebrity who actually you know, just launched their podcast and probably want to be, you know, people would want to find that one. So anyway, um, so remember your SEO opportunity is the number of episodes you upload. And this is why, you know, in my simple podcasting course, I tell you the secret of podcasting, which is the longevity of it and, and the number of episodes you upload. That is the secret of podcasting success. And that's also why most podcasts fail because most, po most podcasts, have you, how many podcasts have you discovered? You're like searching a term and you find this and you're like, oh, they ended in 2019. Oh, they only ended after seven episodes. I find, I found so many podcasts that ended after three episodes. Nobody has staying power. You know, like I was just talking with this uh, with with a family friend, you know, who who uh, like hires um, like hires college students to work, and like and and they they were telling me people have such bad work ethic. College students, not just college students, adults too. I mean, but everyone, most people in the world have really bad work ethic. And so if you are the one of the few people who have decent work ethic and you can sustain your podcast for years, you're going to win. I mean, that's really the. The, the most stupid and true secret about podcast success. That's why I'm going to be around the next 40 years uploading podcast episodes. You're not going to stop me. I'm, I've dedicated myself to upload podcast episodes till the day I have my dementia is too high and I can't do it anymore. That's it. And then I'll have someone else do it. You know, my, my, you know, my, uh, I don't have children, but I'll hire someone by that point to keep uploading for the, for the rest of their life. I'm going to keep my podcasting going for the next 4,000 years. How about you? Are you going to be three episodes in, 70 episodes in, and then peter out and give up? No. 4,000 years. That's how long my podcast, you know, longer than that. Anyway, but <laughs> so that's how you name a podcast episode. Um, and, and of course, the, the, the feedback part of it, right? Don't just ask your husband. Is your, is your husband your ideal podcast listener? Your wife, your spouse, your, your friend, your coach, your marketing? Don't just ask me. If I like it, if I'm not the ideal podcast listener for, for you, you have to ask 10, at least three, but try to ask 10 of the typical listener of your podcast. So in the case where we're doing a, an ADHD uh, autism podcast, you want to ask two types of people. You want to ask ADHD therapists, right, who have lots of patients and clients. I don't know what they call patients or clients. I'm not sure who they might turn on to your, your podcast, right? So ask a bunch of them for their opinion. And don't just ask, don't just give them one option, right? Whenever you're asking for title, op, title uh, feedback, you always give them people three options or at least two. You know, so which one do you like better? You know, two is fine, right? Which one of these two do you like better? And do you have a third option that you, that you have in mind that you might want to suggest? So you want to give people two options. You ask, in this case, you would ask the, you, you, essentially, you ask the ideal listener and you ask the ideal referral source, right? So in, th in this case, the ideal referral source would be the therapists. And the ideal listener, if you happen to have any friends, colleagues, acquaintances who uh, you know personally has the ADHD uh, diagnosis and they might be interested to, to keep learning how to you know, work well with it, ask them. So ask for three therapists and three ADHD uh listeners, podcast listeners, um, especially who people who listen to podcasts, right? Uh, because they're, we're an interesting bunch of people, right? So, but don't ask anybody who, you know, in this case, for example, who has not been diagnosed and who isn't looking for these kinds of episodes. So I hope this is helpful and uh, good luck on naming it. And also, lastly, also, you can always rename it. I have known a podcast that have renamed it after even years. So, um, and you may come up with a better name three months after you've launched your podcast. And whenever you have a better name, guess what? That's just simply 
another marketing opportunity for your podcast. Hey, relaunch. We we're relaunching the podcast as XYZ name. And uh, we've been going now for, you know, 30 episodes. And now we're relaunching with this name and, and join us here, that kind of thing. So I hope this helps.